Hey guys, good morning. You made it through all of April. That's awesome. It's the first uh, Sunday in May. So go ahead and stretch. The weather's going to be great today. Go find your shorts. <laughs> Put the shorts on. And uh, hopefully you can get outside today. Enjoy some of the weather. Uh, enjoy some of the weather. Enjoy all of the weather. Enjoy some nice weather. Wanted to say quickly congratulations to, to Kirsten and, and Jesse Karn who had a baby this week, uh, which is amazing. Little Ezra Karn. So congratulations to you guys. We want to be praying for you uh, and for your family. Uh, just a real special time uh, in having a new baby and a real crazy time in having a new baby in the midst of what's going on socially. Uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about just for a minute or two this morning uh, was something I've been thinking about this week, and it has to do with uh, with individualism and our sense of individualism and how how the autonomy that we feel over our lives can really feel good, and I think in some ways can be a good thing. I mean, our our society probably um, even up to the start of this this uh, pandemic. I think we're probably more individualistic than ever before uh, in the Western world, in Canadian society. I mean, we're at a place where we barely have to go to stores. We can have stuff delivered to our house. We stream things on demand. We don't have to wait for cable companies or people to decide what we're going to watch. We watch, we choose what we watch and all this stuff, it feels good. Like we like it. We like to be in control of our lives. And in some ways, the, the pandemic has really fostered that or, um, or caused that sense of individualism to flourish because we don't have the same kind of social commitments and responsibilities that we had a month or two ago in many cases. Um, and so, yeah, I think individualism on its own is not necessarily a bad thing. However, it's incomplete because we're also created for connection with one another. We're also created for community. And putting too much weight on the individualism side of our lives and the autonomy side of our lives, I think can cause the community side, let me see if I can get it in the frame, to cause the community side to suffer. This is so bad. Uh, so I just wanna encourage us again this morning to, to reach out to people, to foster that sense and that need for community and for connection uh, in your life. So have a conversation with people on the phone or on Zoom or whatever and connect with each other. Uh, I, I was reading this this morning from Acts and it's Acts uh, chapter 2 verses 42 through 47 talking about the early church and it says they devoted themselves to the apostles teaching and fellowship and the breaking of bread and the prayers awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles all who believed were together and had many things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. I was, I was rereading this this morning. I'm just... Uh, struck by it, how physically we're we're so far from this, right? We're not spending much time together. We're not breaking bread together. We're not worshiping together physically, right? We're very far from this. And yet, spiritually, emotionally, I don't think we have to be far from this. Uh, however, it takes more work. It takes more work because we have to overcome the barrier of physical distance. And yet, I think in our minds, in our hearts, if we're committed to being part of a community, being part of a church, uh, practicing what it means to be part of a church, it can be done. And it can be done with that kind of intentionality. Of, uh, so again, I want to encourage you again to, to reach out to one another, to reach out to the people in your lives, to reach out to people who are part of the church, connect with them, have a conversation on the phone or Zoom or whatever. Uh, Emma joined the little games group that was happening on Friday and had a lot of fun with that. But there's other ways that, that I mean, join that one, but there's other ways that we can and should be connecting and figuring out how we maintain our sense of community and connection with that, each other uh, during this time of quarantine. 
hopefully the news seems to be indicating that uh, we may be closer to the end uh, than to the beginning, which would be great. Uh, so we can keep praying for uh, things to, to move along, that we could move into the next phase, the next chapter of this whole global experience and what it means for us in Canada and Waterloo Region. Uh, and let's continue to pray for our healthcare workers and those who are being affected by this virus. In terms of announcements, guys, uh, prayer meeting Wednesday at 7.30s, book study Thursdays at 7. Uh, keep checking out the Facebook group for other events and things that people are doing. Uh, if you want to foster connection and community and so on, put an idea up there and, and hopefully we can get some uh, traction behind it. And uh, other than that, tithes and offerings given online. That's it for announcements, guys. Coming in at under six minutes this morning. Hope you guys are well. Get the shorts out. Enjoy the day. Bless you guys.